an avenue of trees. 5,000 miles from home, I'm listening to this old Bodhi tree in Watumong, Chiang Mai. It's as if the vibrant colors of the flags illustrate the riches and wisdom of its story and the culture of Thailand. Translating what I absorb from nature through drawing and painting, I make art that I love to share, expressing my own stories with others. So what am I doing in Thailand today? Why did I first come here in 2014? My intention was to relax and travel cheaply through Southeast Asia, reflecting on future options in the six months leave I'd taken from art teaching. The possibility of exploring cottage industry textiles seemed remote, but memories of West Africa where I first saw indigo dye seemed fresh again. Near exhaustion from full-time work mashed together with the humidity and tonal language I could neither speak nor read. Yep, culture shock again. Confronting the language hurdle first literally opened an unexpected doorway into the map of my current practice as an artist. I collected my senses in the natural air conditioning along an avenue of exotic trees leading from the university gate to the language center. Large colorful murals on one of the buildings I passed had a sign I could actually read in English. Faculty of Fine Arts. I smiled. I knew a Master of Fine Arts could be the launching pad I needed to re-establish a serious practice in painting. But how to reach it? A thesis could be written in English, the professor said. A second language for all the staff, though. And my application's acceptance would be a gamble. If I gained a place, I thought, a two-year commitment in an overseas university deserved as significant a topic for my thesis proposal. Almost 10 years earlier, I'd been so moved by the human loss in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina that I made an expressive drawing. Art making has a therapeutic effect, and throughout my teaching career, I access studio space in my garage, at life drawing sessions or workshops, if only to create small works and illustration in the time available. The stress of full-time employment was eased through meditation, and I learned that balance is a critical condition for generating creative work. By 2014, I was concerned about the loss of whole ecosystems like the Great Barrier Reef, but tired of seeing confronting art about the environment. I realized my passion for net natural indigo dye could be combined with imagery to create artworks with a new function for its audience. My intention was to immerse the viewer in a sea of calming blue tones to relax the mind and to stimulate the imagination with other key symbols. The two-year master program allowed me to refine my practice, including indigo dyeing techniques. Acknowledgement of nature is conspicuous in Thailand, like the orange ribbons tied with blessings around all the Bodhi trees. Exquisite sculptural offerings of tiny flowers decorate the small spirit houses outside every building and shop and adorn the countless temples. It's a kind of community effort that visually acknowledges our connection and interdependence with nature. I'm not a scientist, but even as a kid, I knew trees produce as much oxygen as the carbon dioxide they consume. Phytoplankton, I now know, is a far more significant provider of oxygen. This winter, I returned to Chiang Mai and was able to dye new panels to make another series of paintings about the ocean and the air we breathe. I'm so excited to return to my studio on the Aussie coast to build those timber stretches that will remind me of trees, plantations, and exotic avenues.